Josh, what's silent, motionless, and spends its whole life staring at the sun? A lizard? No, guess again. I don't know. A solar panel? Of course. We all know these big slabs of silicon can produce electricity, but the question is, how much? In this video, we'll run through the annual and daily generation of the average solar panel system in the UK and the eight main factors that affect it. I'm Charlie. I'm Josh. And we are part of Sunsave. We have launched the UK's first solar subscription. More on that later. Onwards. Right, let's jump straight to the specifics. Josh, how much electricity could a typical solar panel system produce in the UK? Wow, you're really cutting to the chase. Yes, I am. Okay, so a typical solar panel system, let's say with 10 430 watt panels, that makes it a 4.3 kilowatt peak system, could produce 3,655 kilowatt hours per year. That sounds like a big number, but for a lot of people watching, that could be pretty meaningless. So can you now add some meaning? Yes, well, firstly, let me explain kilowatt hours. All the electricity in your house is measured in kilowatt hours, which is a measure of electrical energy. A kilowatt hour is when you consume 1000 watts for one hour. Makes sense. I mean, we could go into a lot more detail about kilowatt hours, but that's not technically what this video is about, and it's a bit of a rabbit hole. That sounds sensible. Thank you. So 3655 kilowatt hours. Is it actually a lot? Is it any good? It's very good. According to UK government data from 2024, the average household uses 3,400 kilowatt hours per year. So this system would be producing more electricity than the household needs. 255 kilowatt hours more. Wow, that was quick. Thank you. So this 3655 figure, where have we got it from? This is based on a 4.3 kilowatt peak system on a south facing roof with no shade and with average UK solar irradiance. So more or less in the middle of Lancashire. Okay, and what if we took this system all the way down to the south of England? Would that make a big difference to the output? Yes, it absolutely would. Uh, there are loads of factors that can affect solar panel output, which we'll go into later, but location in the UK is a big one. If you took that same 4.3 kilowatt peak system and moved it down to Devon, for instance, it could produce as much as 4,600 kilowatt hours per year. Well, that's a uh, 1,000 kilowatt hours more than the Lancashire one. Yes, it is, very speedy. Hit the like button. So taking the same example system of 4.3 kilowatts peak, producing 3,655 kilowatt hours a year, how much is that producing per day? So on average, it's producing 10 kilowatt hours per day, but it doesn't exactly work like that. Because of the different seasons. Exactly. So in summer, when the days are longer, the skies are clearer, and the sun is higher in the sky, your solar panel system will produce about 40% of its total annual output. And in winter? When the days are shorter, the skies are cloudier, and the sun is lower in the sky, your system will produce about 11% of its total annual output. That is a pretty big difference. Yep. I suppose that means then that you have more electricity than you need in the summer and not enough in the winter. Exactly, but don't worry, your excess electricity won't go to waste in the summer. You can export all of it to the grid, and as long as you sign up for a solar export tariff, you'll be paid for all of your exports. And then in the winter, you'll need to get some electricity from the grid to make up for the lower solar panel production at that time of year. So how much can someone get paid for the excess electricity they export to the grid? Quite a lot. There are solar export tariffs now available that will pay you the same amount for your exports as they charge you for your imports. And that means for every kilowatt hour of electricity that you send to the grid in the summer, it will financially cancel out a kilowatt hour of electricity that you buy from the grid during the winter. Thank you for the very crisp and clear explanation, Josh. You're welcome. Does that mean then that a 4.3 kilowatt peak system isn't actually producing 10 kilowatt hours exactly every day? That is very true. In summer, it's more like 20 kilowatt hours per day, very roughly. And then in winter, it's somewhere around five kilowatt hours per day and autumn and spring somewhere in between. Exactly. So we've already talked about location as being one of the factors that affects how much electricity a solar panel can produce. But we've got seven other factors we'd like to talk to you about. So Josh, kick us off. I will. The first one is the type and quality of the solar panel itself. Makes complete sense. It does. Uh, if you have two solar panels, it's very simple, uh, and all other things being equal, if one has a higher power rating than the other, it will generate more electricity than the other one. And it's the same with solar panel efficiency. Efficiency, can you explain what that means in the context of solar panels? It's the percentage of natural light that a solar panel is able to convert into electricity. So a solar panel with a higher efficiency will convert more electricity than a solar panel with lower efficiency. 
Interesting, so the lesson here is to get good solar panels. Yes, get good or you'll be sorry. Factor number two is the quality of the installation itself. It would be a spectacular waste of money to get a premium solar and battery system only to have it ruined by substandard installation. That would be tragic. It would be, and to avoid solar tragedy, you should make sure you pick an installer who is experienced, has good reviews and has all the right accreditations. An installer that doesn't cut corners. Solar panel systems are complex networks of electrical equipment and if they're not installed properly, they could malfunction or underperform. Yes, yes, yes. The next factor is the angle and orientation of your solar panels. South facing, right? Not always. Uh, most people think that you need to have a south facing roof in order to get solar panels and have them be a success. But fortunately, solar panel technology has come along so far that you don't necessarily need a south facing roof anymore. Tell us more. In many cases, it's actually preferable to have an east west array rather than a south facing one so that you can fit more solar panels on your roof and so that your panels generate electricity for more of the day. And what about north facing solar panels? So, north, east or north west facing panels can definitely work as long as they're combined with south, east or west facing panels on other parts of your roof. But a fully north facing system isn't usually worth it. Okay, so we've covered the ideal direction of solar panels. What about angle? The ideal angle for solar panels in the UK is between 30 and 50 degrees, which fortunately is also the angle that most residential roofs sit at. Right, on to factor number four, shading. Most things that like lying under the sun love a little bit of shade. But yes. for solar panels, this is bad. Oh no. Obviously, if you've got shade on a panel, it means that some light isn't getting through. If you get solar panels installed using a traditional string inverter, your solar panels are gonna be installed in strings, and there's normally about eight to 14 panels per string. If you've got shade hitting one panel in that string, it can have a detrimental effect on the output of all of those panels. So it's really important before your installation that you get any trees cut back that might be casting shade onto your roof. However, some shade is unavoidable. For instance, you might live next to a big building that casts shade on your system at various points in the day and you can't exactly cut it down. And that actually leads me on to factor number five, microinverters and optimizers. What are they and what do they do? So these clever pieces of tech basically allow a solar panel system to avoid all the problems they encounter because of shading so that they can keep producing electricity uninterrupted. In essence, both of these things ensure that every solar panel in your system operates independently of the other ones, so that if shade affects one panel on your roof, it doesn't bring down the performance of any other panels. Sounds smart. Does that mean every solar panel system comes with microinverters or optimizers? No, just the ones where it's deemed necessary, as it will add a little bit to the overall cost of your system. A good installer will assess your roof and shading situation and decide whether you need an additional piece of technology. Factor number six, solar panel cleanliness. Josh, have you ever seen a really filthy solar panel before? To be honest, not really. Nor have I, and that's because solar panels in the UK don't tend to get very dirty. They've got a waterproof coating and they're all installed at an angle. So whenever it rains, rainwater runs right off them and gives them a good clean. And as you can imagine, this natural process happens pretty often in the UK. Some people would say too often. But that isn't to say that solar panels in the UK don't still need cleaning now and again. Solar panels probably need to clean every two to three years, but if you live near dusty farmland or the salty coast, you probably need to clean them every six to 12 months. What happens if I don't clean them? Something called solar panel soiling, which is a buildup of things like dust, dirt, agricultural emissions, exhaust fumes, bird droppings, lichen and pollen. It sounds like it's pretty minor, but this cocktail of dirt is hard to see and it could be causing a small impact on your solar panels output. Thanks, Charlie, that's gross. Our seventh and final factor is solar panel degradation. Time marches forward, everything gets old, and that includes solar panels. This is pretty heavy stuff to finish on. Yes, it is. Uh, a solar panel will typically lose one to 3% of its efficiency within the first year of operation, and then a further 0.5% in every subsequent year. So by year 25, a solar panel will be producing 14% less electricity than it did in its first year. Not much of a drop after 25 years. Not at all, and premium monocrystalline panels today are expected to last upwards of 40 years. Hopefully we've demystified solar panel output for you. Despite the UK's cloudy weather, a bunch of solar panels on your roof can really do the business. If switching to solar sounds very tempting but you're put off by the high upfront cost, it's really high time that you heard about Sunsafe Plus. 
it means you can switch to solar at no upfront costs and instead you'll pay a fixed monthly fee for 20 years and you'll get yourself a best in class solar and battery system and you will also be protected by the SunSafe guarantee. To learn more about SunSafe Plus or solar in general, please visit our website, sunsafe.energy. And for regular videos about the wonderful world of solar, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to leave us any questions in the comments below. Goodbye!